So now we're going to move on to Register 360 2020. So it's the new naming convention. We're now moving to yearly release, uh, not yearly releases, but yearly naming conventions with point releases so that you know where you are as a customer. So again, on this journey, this is where we are, Cycle and Register 360. So we're in the office stage now, and we're getting the data registered and prepared for publishing further downstream. So we have a new version of Cyclone Register 360, which is called the BLK edition. And I really, I, a lot of people have been asking me about this, so I just wanted to make sure that you're aware before we move through the rest of the presentation, the differences between the products. So the BLK edition can import data from the BLK to go and the BLK 360, and that is it. It can't import any other data type. So that's, that's how it's locked down. You can export RCP data without the need for an additional license from the BLK edition. Um, and you can additionally, you can augment that um, uh, Cyclone Register 360 BLK edition with other licenses in order to, for you to be able to publish TrueView or Jetstream data. So using our new Cyclone Publisher or Publisher Pro licenses. But there is no, this is critical as well, there is no upgrade path to Cyclone Register 360. So if you are, if you want to invest in the BLK edition, that's it, you're locked down, that's, you're only working with BLK to go and BLK 360 data. If you want to open the floodgates, if if you will, to all other different data types, then Registry 60 is going to be your starting point. So it can import data from all the Leica Reality Capture sensors, such as the RTC, the BLK series, the Scan Station P series and C series, uh, which a lot of you on this call I know are using. Um, but we can also import Faro data and ZFS data as well, with some slight limitation with, Far with Faro, for example, all around the panoramic imagery. But certainly, you know, we can get the data in and, and work with it very quickly. We can import E57 files, registered or unregistered, um, which is a you know, fantastic if it's coming from another open data source. And, and But Cyclone Publisher, as a minimum, is required for RCP export, which is not included by default. And we'll talk about Cyclone Publisher later. But of course, you can still augment um, Registry 60 with additional licenses to create true views and Jetstream, much like you can with the other version. So that's just to give you an overview of those two products. So um, also, this is a, just announced the other day, every BLK360 now being sold, every new one will come with, uh, will be bundled with a version of Reg360 BLK edition. Um, what that means, uh, what that does is facilitates up to five licenses of Cyclone Field 360 on um, your tablet or phone devices as well. So now you've got a complete um, ecosystem built around the Leica like Geosystems products, but with a clear connectivity into the Autodesk um, suite using uh, the RCP export from the BLK edition as well. So if you want to continue with that workflow, opening up the RCP file in various Autodesk packages, then you can, but I think that's a really important piece of information. So Registry 60, first up, BLK to go integration. So this, if you haven't seen the BLK to go, it's a handheld mobile mapping device. You turn it on, you press a button, you start walking, you have a, 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 the BLK to go live app as an option lecture if you want, and you can start collecting data. So what you can see here is the scan positions, um, uh, sorry, not the scan positions, these are waypoint markers along the trajectory which are created at the point of import. Um, and I will talk, I'll show you that live in a second in a demo. And uh, these little um, I, new marker icons, instead of the, the old yellow cheese heads, can be changed in size. You've got this setup radius option within the settings, so you can change those up to a meter in size within your view um, if you would like to. But the data, in terms of downloading data from the BLK to go into Reg360, you can use uh, the USB C cable or you can use Wi Fi, and that will allow you to connect directly to the device. And at the point of import, you have two options. You can import the data into Reg360, and then you can do more stuff. So maybe you've got four or five walks that you want to register together. If you've got one walk and all you want is maybe an E57 export, there's a tick box which allows you to export just the E57 without doing any imports of Reg360, which um, you know, might be interesting for some of you. So that's BLK to go integration. Then we've got new ortho image export from Register 360. So I'm going to show this tool live in a second, but it allows you to do obviously facades, uh, plan views, uh, but also very quick cross-section views with a scale bar. And this publishes not only an image file, but it also publishes a DXF file. And we'll go through that process and then you open the DXF, it references the images. So if you're using a, maybe a, a lower end CAD package or something that doesn't support point clouds, or you want to very quickly send um, a quick cross section across to someone who can open it in a CAD package without needing the full point cloud, that is where you can use this feature. But it's super easy to use and it's really, really quick in terms of generating a, deliver a deliverable like you can see on the screen now. 
Now, the smooth surface tool, again, we're going to demo this in a minute, but this allows you to very quickly clean the point cloud and analyze data above a ground surface. So for those of you who've used reg register back in the day, Cyclone Register, we've always had this smooth surface tool. Um, this now does it within Reg360. It's very, very quick um, and allows you to rapidly uh, get rid of any noise or information. Um, in particular, with BLK to go where you, you know, you're walking through perhaps a crowded area and want to get rid of people or cars. Um, it's a really nice uh, workflow. In Reg360, also now I'm gonna, I'm gonna show this, but we can export by limit box and setup. This is controlled by the um, Publisher Pro license, but we can now publish those, uh, publish those limit boxes out and we can also select setups. Uh, so that's something that a lot of people have asked. So if you've created limit boxes within Register360, you can see we've got these little check boxes just here. You can say export, and when you hit publish by limit box, it will allow you to choose which ones you want. If you are creating an LGS file, the LGS file will, will contain limit boxes that you can turn on or off anywhere, but you can't specifically export by them for LGS or Jetstream data or TrueView data. But that, um, I think, is going to be very, very useful for a lot of people. Um, and also improved RCP exports. So there was a 2 billion point limitation, which has been removed. Um, and uh, you know, we're working closely with Autodesk in terms of uh, their SDK to make sure that we've got the best workflow. But you must ensure you have the correct amount of temporary space. So uh, on this basis, it's about 30 gigabytes per billion points that you're exporting. And it's a specially designated temp drive um, that Autodesk specify. We can give you the link to that if you need it, but you must ensure you have that space. Also, I would say at this point, if there is an error, we give you an error report up front. So if there is an issue with the export, uh, then you'll know it. Um, so you can change you can change accordingly, which is nice. This is included in both Cyclone Publisher and Publisher Pro. And again, it's included by default within Cyclone Register 360 BLK edition only. Um, and we'll, we can look at the publishing landscape in a second. So now I'm going to jump across into Register 360. So again, this is all live, guys. If anything goes wrong, give me some grace. Um, I am just now going to jump into this data set. And what you can see here, this is a BLK data set that was generated by one of my colleagues who happens to have a rather nice uh, Nissan GTR in his drive. He's, um, it's uh, yeah, very, very jealous of it. It's a lovely, lovely car, lovely little house. And uh, what you can see here, this is BLK to go data. And you can see you've got all those setup markers that I said before. So we've got rid of the yellow cheese heads, plus we've got all the asset markers. So anything that's been collected with that 12 megapixel camera from the BLK to go, um, they will also be directly included. So yeah, a Nissan GTR and a Corvette. Look, there you go. Two, two very nice cars. Um, so that is the data. I'm just going to show you in the settings tab here under the rendering. You can see now if I change this, the setup radius and apply, you can see that changing. I've got it typically set to about around 50 um, and that looks quite nice. Um, close that down. So what we can do is we can jump to any one of these scan positions. So I'm going to just jump to this corner here and I've turned off um, transition animations. So that's a that's a nice little tip for you guys. If anyone's working in Reg360 is this turn this animations off. It looks great, but it speeds up your workflow massively if you turn that off because you just jump between your positions. So what we're looking at now is these panoramic images. I'll turn off the point cloud. These are the panoramic images that have been collected by the BLK to go. So those three cameras that are taking photos. And at any point in time, obviously, as you can just jump between these positions very, very quickly to navigate your project. Um, I think probably in the garage at that point. There you go. So that is is that data set there. Uh, we can see the point cloud as well. You can turn off the put the images if needs be, and obviously I can go back into the full 3D mode. But what I'm going to do first is generate this ortho image. Um, so we've got these new viewing tools now. We've got top, right, left, down. You know your standard CAD tools, but that's something that was missing. Um, if I just press T, got the hot hot key to go into the top down view. But I'm just going to go into the front view because I want to do a very very quick slice through this building to show you this new ortho function. So these are the two new functions here. You've got smooth surface, which is this one, and you've got the ortho image here. And I'm just going to click create ortho image, and you can see that pops up and invokes this little window. And all you need to do is draw a reference line. Choose your section thickness and then choose your output so you can see the folder. I've got it going to images. You can choose your image scale so you can uh, basically increase the quality or decrease the quality accordingly. If you want any kind of smoothing on your um, on your on your point cloud and your image that comes out. Now, I tend to leave it on none or low. Uh, they, they do work. You know, I, high, high is very, very nice, but sometimes it takes away some of the crispness of the edges. So I tend to keep it on no or none. Uh, sorry, none or low. Um, 
And then we've got a fantastic option to be able to include a scale bar and you can include, include that all the top or the bottom of the image. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to draw a reference line. What's really nice is if I start over here and I just draw it diagonally, it will always ping back to the top. So however I do that, it will always ping back. But what I'm going to do is just draw a section roughly through this floor, through, uh, through this building. So we create a floor plan and we're going to say we want a 10, men, 10 centimeter section. So now the create section file uh, option has been ungrade because we've drawn our reference line. We hit, hit create section file and that will now very, very quickly, you'll see the scale, you'll see the uh, taskbar zip across, create our um, DXF and our file that we can open up in CAD. So that's just a quick preview. That's not the example. You can't zoom in or anything on this. We just say accept. Now, if I just go to my folder here, I've now got this new Fly 75 DXF. And if I just open that up in CAD, there you go. I'll close this down. Oops, sorry. Jump back to CAD. Jump back to CAD. There you go. So that is the that is the ortho image that we have just created automatically. So you can imagine you very you a customer says I want to slice at this point. Well, you don't have to send them the data. You don't have to export anything. You don't have to send a point cloud with a limit box. Just quickly send them that ortho image direct directly out of Registry 60, and even you can start digitizing over this directly. So I I personally feel that that is a fantastic new feature uh, for you guys to get your teeth into. Now, the next thing that I would like to show you very quickly is the smooth surface um, uh, solution. So what you can see here, we've got a couple of bits of detritus in the in the garden. We've got trees and bits and pieces. We can get rid of all of this if we want to. Now, what I'm going to do is I just click the smooth surface uh, button and, it, and the point cloud turns gray. And what we can, so this is done like a pre-process to kind of analyze the point cloud before we do this. But what I now do is if I click on the floor surface, I just double click. That's now doing detect smooth surface. So everything now above the ground surface will be marked red. And again, I'm doing this all real time. So this is now showing you everything that it thinks is above that ground surface. So if I just say hide all marked, you can see now all of that data very, very quickly disappears. But if I want to specifically drill down and delete something, so I think there's a bit of data here that I potentially want to get rid of, I just press the F key to draw a fence. And I just draw a box over that area that will now highlight and I can just say delete inside or delete outside. So if I just say delete inside, you'll see that's now going to clean the points. And if I just rotate around, you can see that that noise has been removed. So we'll just do that one more time, maybe around this side. I've got some tree, got some trees on this side. We've got, obviously, this is grass. So it's a little bit harder to detect. Um, so just go back into plan view and we will just draw this time. We use a polygonal fence and we'll just go like this around the tree area. Boom, done, and we'll just say delete inside, and then that shouldn't take too long at all. Now, if you do delete the points and you don't, uh, and you actually want them back, there you go. There's the clean data, okay, with a couple of bits of the grass gone. But uh, if you do want them back, you can click on the bundle. Uh, sorry, you can multi-select these, and you can say restore deleted points, and you can restore visual points, clouds, cloud, or both directly from there as well. So those, that's those features. Um, I think that's pretty much it. There's probably one other thing which I wanted to show. You. Oh, the export function. So let me just close. Let me just open this other project here. Um, I think this is this one here. I'm going to close this project. OK, so you can see how quickly the project opens up, which is nice. We're just in that data set now. Um, and what you can see here, this is already registered. So we've got some scans that are colorized. You've got some that are grayscale, but all of the red markers have come through and you can see all the scans. So I've used this quite a lot in my demonstrations because it's a really nice data set. We can obviously see that data in the point cloud, but you've all you've got all of your links already established. You've got your registration, your bundle error. But what you can do now is you can effectively um, on the you can actually show your um, uh, sorry, you can actually say show suggested links within bundle. OK, so if I now click show suggested links within bundle, you can now see all the additional links that the software will try and run through in order to tighten up that registration any further. Now, what that means is this will this will basically it's like the auto add cloud uh, cloud to cloud constraints wizard that we used to have in Cyclone Register. Uh, this will try and just find as many connections with other scan positions as possible. But what we can do now, just for those who are power users, we've had actually changed the maximum number so this can i think go up to about 500 now so the maximum suggested links per bundle this used to be capped around 50 so just so you you've got that takeaway from today if you, you want to now you can you know you can put that up to 500 for example and press ok uh, but in this instance we've got you know it's a limited number of scans anyway so we're not going to see those 
what we can do from here at this point i'm going to just go to the um, accept stage so i'm just going to go to the final publishing step if i wanted to publish any data out now if i click e57 so i'm going to say e57 i'll just save it out to i'll just save it out to a generic location i can now choose to select my setups or select by limit box if i sit click select setups you can then choose which ones you want to export so i can just tick those off and i say right i just want one two three and under publish limit box, I can now see any limit boxes which I've created. So small building limit box one, and I can just check those two which I want to export. And that will then only export the content of the limit boxes, which is, you know, a lot of you may break that down by floor, for example, or whatever, but they, that will then be exported into that file type. So that is um, basically everything pretty much that I wanted to show you in Registry 60. In